They said, we're going to give you what you want, huh? Oh, yeah. Good. That ain't nothing. Ain't going to get nothing. Now, the Negro teenager doesn't have any possibility. As we sit here now, I, I mean, as of this moment, this is not historical, does not have any possibility of accepting American history, which is saying has no, no way of learning it. Because it has not been and it is not being taught. He has, there is no possibility for him begin, to begin to act on what we always like to think of as the American assumptions, you know, man's a man for all that and all that jazz. It isn't that he wouldn't. It's because there's no possibility of his doing so. Because the country intends to keep him in his place and still does. So the only way a Negro teenager can make it is to step outside that system. You know, to become in effect a criminal on whatever level. You know, to become an operator, you know, like really to make it. Or to turn to Malcolm X. They're trying to tear down our homes, brother. And when, they, when the white man try to tear down your homes, then it's time for you to do something. But what can we do? We don't know anything about what's going on. I mean, we try to go to the meeting and things like that. We watch the television. We watch all this about Birmingham down there. Just like Malcolm X said yesterday on television. He said, the white man, he talk about uh, truth. And uh, uh, this man, Mr. King, he down there talking about, uh, yeah, can we get some kind of, uh, can we get some kind of uh, cooperation? Can we get some kind of truth down there? Oh, what are they doing down there? They're not doing anything. He, I'm calling him a chump, just like Malcolm X called him. He's a chump, and, a, and a, I think a black Muslim is right in some of his doings. And I think that a, a truce down there is impossible. It's utterly impossible. It's fantastic, and it's unbelievable. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, let me tell you. Now, they're talking about better jobs. Jobs right here. You want to tell you what kind of job they're going to give us? They're going to let us tear down our own homes out here in Hunters Point. That's the job we're getting. And you know what they're going to pay us? Let me tell you what they're going to pay us. They're going to pay you $2 an hour. They're going to holler some kind of apprenticeship deal or something like that. Now, what else is that gaining you? It's not gaining you a thing. You won't get anything. They'll help you tear, you'll tear down your own homes. It's a job temporarily. And then what you going to do? Where you going to live? You're not going to live anywhere. They're not even... In, in the process of trying to tell you where you're going to live, all they're talking about is tearing down on the spot. How long have you been in San Francisco? Well, I've been in San Francisco about 18 years, ever since I was about a year or two old. And you live around here, too? Yeah. <laughs> you stay in a temporary housing? No, I stay in the project. That's a temporary house. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no temporary house no more. They're tearing them down. That's you still in temporary house. Mm -hmm. Not the current house. Mm -hmm. There ain't no more. There ain't gonna be no face when they get through. We're gonna be living out on the street. It'll make you feel bad? Yeah, it'll make you feel bad. Won't be no place to go. We'd be living out here on streets and tents. Yeah. Where would you like to go if you could? Yeah. What part of San Francisco would you like to go? I like to stay up here on top of the hill. You would? Uh, hey. so how long have you been living on top of the hill? Ever since I've been born. And then this is part of our redevelopment also. What do you mean? You say redevelopment meaning You mean well, removal of Negroes. Uh, yes, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what you mean. <laughs> In other words, a lot of the Negroes who came because the Japanese were pushed out now are being pushed out. Now being pushed out themselves. That's right. In effect, San Francisco is reclaiming this, that's right. this property that's right. to build it up, which means Negroes have to go. That's right. Mm -hmm. And in Where are they going to go? Well, they're going out to Hunters Point, into the uh, Haight-Ashbury area, and also into Ocean mm -hmm. View, wherever they can find reasonable Rent. rents, yeah. Yeah. south of Market and all these other places, wherever they can find cheap rent. In other words, well, no, only go going from one ghetto to the other. To, yes, yes. The, the Negro housing project, in effect. Yeah, as well as a few Caucasian staying in, you know. Uh-huh. Well, I know a lot about housing projects in New York. I'm sure this doesn't differ at all. No. How's there some of the same problems, although the, the building, the exterior looks... Well, the exterior nice. looks marvelous. It's the whole point. Yes. You know? But I know what goes on inside. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure that in the housing projects, I know the housing projects in New York, the kids despise them, you know. 
Better, ha better housing in the ghetto is simply not, a po simply not possible. Yeah. You can create, you can build a few better plants, but you cannot do anything about the um, moral and psychological effects of being in the ghetto. Yes, I this, this is the point. Everybody living in, in those housing projects is just as endangered as ever before by all the things that the ghetto means. If I were raising a kid in one of those housing projects, I would still have at the front door, or probably right next door in the housing project, all the things that I was trying to escape. And I mean such things as, I mean even from such things as, as dealing with insurance companies if I want fire insurance, you know, to the fact that um, in the playground, my boy and my girl will be exposed to, to, to the man who sells narcotics, for example to a million forces which are inevitably set in motion when a people are despised. And you can't pretend that you're not despised if you are. You were saying yesterday that children can't be fooled. Well, I could be fooled, you know, and be glad about, you know, having a through whatever it is, you know, smash my tag and tear us over looking at a garage. But if my kid won't be. my kids that are being destroyed. That is fantastic about this. That is the ILW housing project, which will be interracial. The people who are renting it now, 70% are Caucasian, 30% uh, Negro. Mm -hmm. And above that will be the Eichler homes and so forth. Eichler's always let Negroes buy if they had the money, although their apartments, I mean, they're houses cost, say, from 22000 up to 32000 yeah. So naturally, this automatically eliminates yeah, right, 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 a right. lot of people. I conclude that all this has something to do with money. The land has been reclaimed for money, and that the people are putting up their houses expect to make a profit. But it seems to me I'm not attacking what is called a profit motive. There are some things more important than profits. I know that New York City has been turned into a desert, really for the same reason that it's happening in San Francisco now. It's as though one, the society made the assumption and certainly acts on the assumption that to make money is more important than to have citizens. You're paying too high a price for this. Because it's, it's only what it's doing to Negro children, which is God knows bad enough. It's what it does to white children who grow up believing that it is more important to make a profit than it is to be a man. And that's the way that society really operates. I don't care what society says. This is what it operates. These are the goals it sets. And these goals aren't worthy of a man. And adolescents know it. Oh, are you working on this? No, I'm not. Well, what, what, has been some of the, what has been some of your problems that you face as a Negro in San Francisco? Well, my main problem is uh, finding a job. Uh, yesterday I talked to a guy, uh, a white fellow that worked at a fitness station. He been out of service two months and he got two jobs. Mm -hmm. I've been here eight years, and I work about three steady jobs. And uh, I look every day. It's like he said, he started out, he looked maybe once or twice a day, and he worked at a pillow station, and worked long shaman work. And he told me from his own mouth who was on top. He didn't come out and see it, just like I'm going to see it, but he came out and told me that uh, you got to know somebody in San Francisco to get somewhere. And by knowing somebody, it's got to be somebody with authority. And nobody in San Francisco, no colored man, got no authority. And I mean, no, there are no.